Hello everyone, welcome to the Warm and Toasty Club Online Memory Afternoon, episode 40. Happy New Year! Yeah, you've probably heard that a lot lately. It is 2021. I don't know if you're like me, but I still keep writing 2020. You know you do that for a couple of months? Could just be me, I don't know. How are your life? How are you keeping? You okay? Doing well? Keeping well, keeping good? Hope so. We've got a lovely show for you this afternoon. We have lots of things coming up. Of course, we have the Retro Raffle. It's the Retro Raffle. Free, free questions, free virtual prizes, and a lot of fun besides. We've got a video from Mr. Martin Newell um, at one of our shows. We've got Memory of the Week. The Memory of the Week. I'll throw it out there for you now just to ponder. What's the worst item of clothing or outfit you've ever worn or owned? What's the worst bit of gear you've ever owned? Do you remember? Did you were you made to wear something you didn't like? Um, it's a bit of a left field one. So check that out in a little while. We've got a first play of vintage TV show of the week. Yes, indeed. Two big hitters there coming up. We have the poem of the week, and of course, lots of lovely banter and silliness. And uh, also, we have our co-hosts. Let me bring them forth. The lovely Tom and Jeanette. Let me find them. Let me find them. There's Tom. Here comes Jeanette. Hi, you, Tom. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Hi, everyone. Happy good, New Year. Good. Hi, Jeanette. Happy New Year to you both. You're looking quite refreshed. You're looking or fresh, if not refreshed. I have had a shower within the last two hours. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. Clean. <laughs> That's a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> to take in all at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom's in a different area. You you are looking well, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, not in your bedroom. Oh, mm. you're in another bedroom. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in what we call the E Studio. Oh, in the wing, the East Wing. The S Studio, <laughs> Esther's old. It's Esther's old room. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you've turned it into a studio. She doesn't mind. <laughs> She's got a bloody house now. I mean, oh, yeah. who cares? <laughs> Do what you like. <laughs> she, more, she, has more room. Sorry. she has more room than we have. Yeah. My daughter's living in a, a quite big flat in uh, Bermondsey in London. And um, she comes home at like, Christmas. And uh, yeah, she wants her room left exactly how she left it. <laughs> she, well, yeah, right. Jade can stay in it now and then. But, you know. She just leaves her stuff there. <laughs> so she's, no. she'll be back. No. Yeah. That's the way. You're, you're you in storage space. You should move without telling her. <laughs> ah. That would be funny. <laughs> just, for a new, just for a joke. Yeah. <laughs> There's a hi to Elmi. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year, says Elmi. Happy New Year to you, Elmi. Mm. Jenny Lifko. Happy New Year, Je Jenny, to you. And afternoon to Sandra Collins. Good to see you all. Hope you're keeping well. Hope you're keeping out of trouble. Um, one thing I was going to ask people, actually, what would be nice to do is if anybody wants to record a little message, a little hi to the gang to, to put on air, it'd be nice if uh, anybody wants to do that on a phone or a mobile phone. Um it's a film. Um, <laughs> um, it'd be lovely to hear people's voices, really. Yeah, it'd be nice if anyone's able to do that. I know it's not easy for some people. Um, but if you want to record a message of uh, greetings, um, we'll put it on. Send it to us at the Woman Toaster Club at gmail.com. I'll pop it on a message on Facebook. Hi, Chrissy. Nice to see you, Christine Jackson. Happy New Year. Lovely to see you all. Missed our Fridays. Ah, uh, so have we. We've been bereft, haven't we, Tom and Jeanette? Bereft Absolutely. on a Friday. Yeah, I've, just, I've literally just been sitting in this room waiting. I've done nothing. Yeah. I've stayed in the chair and waited. Yeah. Every Friday, yeah, I just come in this, you know, just come and sit in the chair and just, <laughs> but nothing's going on. 
no <laughs> the world stopped <laughs> yeah I, i've been doing it in front of a window so that when people go by they just look at me and then i imagine that they're our audience <laughs> framed but have you got not... pictures of me and tom next to you <laughs> yeah i have i have a cut, big cut out Customers. yeah they're, they're on well they're actually on sort of on big blow up dolls and um <laughs> i just put your face on them and it does look a bit weird from outside i must admit but it's a living do you know what i mean um <laughs> the dog walkers walkers seem to like it <laughs> keeps keep you off the streets keeps me off the streets well i'm not allowed on the streets nowadays you know just got to keep <laughs> indoors uh happy new year michelle and happy new year to you and ann and scotty um and happy new year to you, Sandra. Marie, hi, everyone. You're all looking so fresh-faced and lovely. Oh, you said the nicest things, even though they're not true. Um, <laughs> happy new year. Nice to see you, Marie, and the, and the Saunders gang. Chrissy says she spoke to Frank. He said he like, hello to everybody and misses you all. Ah, oh, Chrissy, ring him round. Uh, hi, Frank. If I don't know if you're able to tune in, but, um, yeah, we, 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 we remember you with great fondness and we miss you too. Hey, look. Um, Tank. yeah frank the tank it, the, the vaccine's coming out you know some of you might have got it give us updates to let us know you know once we're all vaccinated we could be back before you know it. it's going to take a little while just a few million to do before uh, we're allowed but <laughs> hey we'll be back well, soon i think some of us might get jabbed sooner than others i'm kind of thinking i'm on the list somewhere because i'm diabetic and my yeah. doctor's surgery um phoned me a week or two ago and asked me if i smoked and i said no and they said did you did, have you ever smoked yeah i did a little bit once years well what well, did i want to sell you some cigars no and then they said okay that's great we'll put you as an ex-smoker and hung up <laughs> and i'm kind of thinking they're gauging where i am on the list with the diabetic no they had a bulk load yep. of cigars given to them and they're <laughs> trying to ship them off to their patients out of date cigars. <laughs> Christmas present from your GP. Yeah. yeah Do you like Castellas? <laughs> <laughs> Regifted. They're probably Hamlet cigars. Do you remember that advert? Hamlet, the yeah. <laughs> oh, the yeah. Sitch in the photo booth dropped down and his hair fell. Yeah, um, the, the Rabsy Nesbit guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't that know his name, but that was funny with the I lovely remember, music. I remember Costellas. Was it Costellas? There was one. I can't remember the advert. Anyway, should we go? Um, should we go uh, looking back, having a few questions with a retro raffle? Should we? Should we, yeah. Tom and Jeanette? Should we? Yeah, yeah. It's the retro raffle. It's coming to your screen. Twenty twenty one. It's the retro <laughs> raffle. Never has been seen. It's the retro raffle, and it's coming, it's coming to your screen. Oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming to your screen. Retro raffle, Facebook Live. Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy New Year to you too, Duncan. Nice to see you there. And apologies. It's, it's Happy New Year. I don't know. Happy what New happened. Year. Oh, here we go again. I've been saying happy new lockdown to people. <laughs> Not sure how well that's going down. Oh, happy new, happy new lockdown. <laughs> lockdown free. Um, yeah, and apologies in advance. It's quite bright. Um, I should probably turn the light out. I'm, I'm coming out in HD apparently today, which is quite Ooh. offensive, especially as I've got a nice little shaving rush there. Um, oh, can't see it. You're, yeah, you're very yeah. exposed. <laughs> Am I? Yeah, very bright. So it's, it's good because it's like anti-wrinkles and everything. It's really good. Anti-blemish. Oh, oh, blimey. Yes, that's what I need. That's what I need, Jeanette. <laughs> so the retro raffle, what have we got? We've got three questions and we've got three prizes. This week, um, <clears throat> I've got some prizes that were gifts for Christmas that um, weren't really wanted or needed. So I thought <laughs> we could have them instead. Um, the first prize we've got, Somebody gave me this um, car exhaust. Um, <laughs> I, I got you that. What are you, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it was you, Tom. <laughs> you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> well, I tried rubbing it in, but it didn't work. Um, um, th well, this, I'm, I'm told it's actually for a Ford Cortina, but unfortunately my Ford Cortina is not available anymore. Um, so sorry about that, Tom. 
So somebody out there is going to make use of this. It's not got a lot of rust. Um, and if you bang it on a wall, most of the, the exhaust will come off. So don't bang it on a wall because the, the rust is keeping it together. And well, I think you put it on pieces of paper so it doesn't mess up. Is that your carpet or your driveway? <laughs> um, uh, that's that's my carpet. I don't like to talk about it too much. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we use a, a hoe and a rake on that. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of goings on at Christmas is all I can say. You grow a few tomatoes in there. Or... Yes, you grow it tomatoes. I can't see. It's, it's like, I don't know, it's like concrete. Yeah, we've gone with a house without floors, basically. And <laughs> this is the after effect of the rake. And it's good because if you bring stuff in on your shoes and that when you come into the house, you don't need to kind of like worry about marking anything. But it's really important to put some cardboard down so you don't ruin your exhausts. Um, that's more important than the dirt floor. Um, yeah, especially when they're so valuable present to you yeah exactly exactly Tom. from someone that he really really cares about and doesn't want to upset or offend i forgot it was from him <laughs> it's, it's out there now so the internet is there forever what can i do i just gotta <laughs> wing it now um happy new year kim and happy new year brenda um ha ha happy new year says brenda and kim too nice to see you to see you nice so in light of we're going with Vintage TV Show of the Week this week, I thought I'd give you a few TV questions, questions to win this lovely Ford Cortina exhaust. I don't know if it's got the muffler on it. I can't really tell that sort of thing because I don't know about cars. I think that would be kind of to the to the right of it. It's usually a, isn't it a, a kind of box-shaped thing? I don't know. What if the car was parked the other way around, though? <laughs> 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 no, sorry. I don't know. Right. Here's the from underneath as well, won't you? You do. If you're like Phil Mitchell and that you have to go in that bit there, he goes down in the basement to uh, look up. Pit. The pit, yeah. Pit. Here's the question. Are you ready, people? For 2021, Michael Parkinson was the king of the British TV talk show in his prime. International stars were eager, eager to face his inquisition. However, he was never allowed to live down an incident in which he was assaulted on stage. Who was the culprit? I thought it could have been one of two because I thought, oh, no, it was Russell Harty, the other one. Oh, yeah. Oh, Russell Harty. And that was Grace Jones, wasn't it? Grace Jones, yeah, but I was thinking that. For a she gave him a right slap, didn't she? Hey. <laughs> she, she was amazing, but slightly weird. Yeah, she was a slave to the rhythm. It's true. She was. Oh, and she pulled up to the bumper and all that. She did in a long black limousine, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Jenny Lithgow, the queen, former queen of the retro raffle, raffle scene, reinstated as the queen of the retro raffle scene. She's got it um, in a way. Elmi, in another way, has got it. Um, Duncan, he's got, oh, he just said Grace Jones, the lovely. Um, Jenny gets it again in another way. Brenda and Duncan and Sandra got it. They all got it right. The answer, of course, how are we going to share out this exhaust? That's the problem. Break bits I, off. Look, it looks like it'll come yeah, away easily. It'll come away easy. Or I, I, I might go down the scrapyard and just get a few more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do that. Um, did I you think... get your plot? Well, I did, yeah. Did, didn't you get yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put one for everyone. <laughs> um, I'd like one for a Humber Scepter, the Mark II, and um, one of those three-wheel vans like Del Boy. Um, please. Reliant Robin. Reliant Robin, that's it. The answer, of course, was Michael Parkinson was assaulted on stage by Emu and Rod Hull, or Rod Hull and Emu. Um uh, and any any of you can claim that if you have a I'll tell you what if you have a full, full Cortina maybe you'll be the winner um, yeah maybe but just while we're at it I've just got a little note of reminding myself it's actually Jenny Lifko's birthday the former queen reinstated queen of the retro raffle scene is her birthday shall we sing her happy birthday yeah all out of, all out of sync oh, let's do it all out of sync 
Yeah. Okay. Happy birthday uh, to uh, you. Happy birthday uh, to uh, you. Happy birthday, uh, dear Jenny, Queen of the Retro Raffle Scene. Happy uh, birthday uh, to uh, you. There we go. Speech, speech. Oh, no, you can't do no speech. Um, you can make a little uh, video. You can make a little video. Anyone, I mentioned this before, anyone who wants to send in a little video, greetings um, to the gang. We'll play it on the show. Send in recorded uh, greetings on your phone or recorder or whatever. We will play it on the show. I um, thought it might be nice to do. And we might even find a photo of you if we know you. If we don't know you, we won't. 78. Jenny Lithgow is 78, and I had wow. the very, very great pleasure of meeting her before Christmas, and um, she doesn't look anywhere near that age. <laughs> She's a very, very handsome lady. I um, I saw her picture. I was looking at it the other night. I was just, there wasn't much on the telly, and I thought, oh, I looked at some <laughs> photos, and I was sit sitting there for 20 minutes looking at Jenny, and I, I also thought, she does look young. So when that came up, 78 well who knew who knew um happy birthday 78 you look great you look great jenny and we're not just saying that um great. 78 uh, great you're 78 don't be late um we can wait um right the next prize in the retro raffle scene moving on is um we've got a a, a, a sort of page of green shield stamps basically but i am told it's okay we i was given these actually not this christmas a few christmases ago and i just found them the other day and i thought actually Tesco, uh, not tesco's the co-op still do take them do they um <laughs> <laughs> oh there we go i'm believing everything again <laughs> yes they do Jeanette. yeah have oh, got... i have them <laughs> <laughs> I have actually got quite a funny story about Green Shield stamps. Good. Um, my dear old late mum told me that when she was pregnant with me, she had to go to the um, the doctors for a checkup or hospital or something, a prenatal thing. And uh, she, of course, when you're pregnant, you need a wee all the time, much like myself. And she popped into the public toilets and quickly, of course, there's no toilet paper. So she grabbed a tissue in her bag. And oh, God went to the doctors and then had to lay there and uh, sit there with the legs up. <laughs> and the doctor walked in and was like, ah, oh, Mrs. Lyons, and uh, pulled away <laughs> some green shield stamps <laughs> <laughs> that must have been stuck to the tissue or something. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd got them in her knickers. <laughs> she got, oh, my God, they were stuck to a fufu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, so I always think of green shield stamps always make me think of my poor mum and her embarrassment when the doctor thought she was trying to pay him in green shield stamps. <laughs> Did she still use them? <laughs> <laughs> That's where the story would end. Oh, so you know, nobody Did he use them? <laughs> yeah, nobody would know. Oh, there we go. Let's put a different light on Sorry. things. <laughs> <laughs> um. The question to win those um, untarnished green shield stamps. <laughs> um, Never been in my mum's handbag. <laughs> or exactly. <anywhere> else. <laughs> or knickers, yeah. Ooh. I think, what have we got? Four, eight. Four, eight. That's it. Is that 20? No, yeah. it can't be. That's 20 oh, green bad. shield yeah. stamps. Go down the local co-op. They might accept them. We don't know. We, we think they, they will. Um, if you answer this question right, at your fingers yeah, might break them off your hands. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she might have a bit of a revival. Um, no, no, sorry, Jeanette. Um, what was the name of Frank Spencer's wife in Some Mothers Do Have Them? Know this definitely. Do you now? Is anybody else, right? Right, isn't it? Um, who's gonna see the Queen on Christmas Day then? <laughs> <laughs> Done a whoopsie in my beret. In my beret. Um, it, see the man in the moon, Jessica. Um, stuff like that. My, my brother did the impressions. I obviously never did impressions. God, there's three. Crikey. 
quick off the mark. Yeah. <clears throat> Elmy's in there. Jenny's in there, of course. Nothing less expected. The former king of the retro raffle scene, uh, Duncan. Bill Coburn, he's in there. Uh, twice. Look, he's, he's so quick, he did it twice. He did it no, twice. The second yeah. one, he's saying, mmm, Betty. Yeah, and that is the answer. Did you get it right? What was the name of Frank Spencer's wife in Some Mothers Do Have Them? Betty is the answer. Mmm, Betty. Um, <laughs> Jenny says, thank you for your kind words, Jenny. Uh, all true, you do look young. Um, we need to be sent what special stuff you're taking, please. Send it off. Um, because we'd like some. Um, gosh, if I looked as good as you do in a manly way compared to a womanly way when I was 78, um, God, I'll be, I'll be over the moon, I really would. Um, so many people got it right. We're going to have to tear up those uh green shield stamps and share maybe you can get two or three each. We'll put them in the post, it will go via raw mail. You will get it in about 2027. Thereabouts. That's the service at the moment. So I <laughs> know sending out newsletters. Some newsletters went out um, in recent times, and it took three weeks for them to get like five roads away or something. No, they, they weren't that close. But to get to other parts of Colchester, three weeks. I thought that was really long, and it was first class as well. Maybe you could try one of the Green Shields stamps, see if they work as your postage stamp. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Good. That would be fast. That would be fun. Would I still be, probably get there faster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you go into the shop, I used to do it not so much since lockdown because I don't go anywhere. But uh, I used to sort of mess about with people at the till and say, "Do you? Do you uh, oh, I've not got enough on me. Do you take Green Shield stamps?" And <laughs> the older ones who worked there would laugh, but the younger ones would go, "What, well, mate? I don't know what you want about." <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly. What's that Green Shield stamp? Oh, look, we have four across the screen now. That's what, not what's gone wrong. That's not legal. Oh, I like that. That's nice. <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. I've not done anything. There's something there, Jono. No, I've not got anything under my uh, areas. I quite <laughs> like the portrait rather than landscape. Yes, yes, yes. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you vogue <laughs> We're doing a bit oh. of bogey thing. Well, I've got to change the picture. <laughs> so let's see. Um, uh, Brenda says we all need youth due. Um, yes, can you get some, Brenda? Yeah, send it, send it into send it through. <laughs> no Holland and Barrett stuff, no own brand. We want proper youth to you. Yeah. Um, Actually, this it was is my birthday last Friday. Oh, Jeanette. Oh, did I not tell you that? Sorry, yes, yes. I, I think I did send you a message on Facebook, but yeah, um, New Year's, Day. New Year's Day is my birthday. New Year's and Day, so I was I... a little bit younger than Jenny, I, I was 58. So I know, yeah. I know, I don't look a day over 57. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look good. I didn't know you were 58. I thought you I were done. <laughs> I, this, yeah. I, it's yeah. only this year that I have um, i don't mind talking about it. <laughs> I just don't okay. care about anything after lockdown. But before, I just wouldn't mention my age because, you know, no, we're in a little bit pigeonholed with our age if you're trying to do stuff in music or whatever. And so I don't care now. <laughs> if, yeah. I'm, if, I'm, if I'm the age of... Um, I don't know, musicians' grandparents and that I'm still on a gig with them. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I know a lot of musicians who say, actually, um, oh, I can't get played on the radio and it's because I'm I'm older. Yeah. I, I think the key is just don't talk about it. Don't talk yeah. about it. And if your music's good enough, it'll get played anywhere. As, um, I've done. as a promoter as well, putting on festivals and, and gigs and things, that you're dealing with uh, most musicians, sadly, are boys and men. And when you're dealing with guys in their 20s and 30s, if they knew that I was as old as their grandparents, <laughs> they probably wouldn't put me in that same kind of, you know, talk to me like an equal. <laughs> so, but now I, I don't know whether those days are over for me. So No, no. Okay. Being a creative's a creative. And I, I think yeah. it doesn't really matter. It's what you put out. Um, it's not, it's anything to be ashamed of. I know some people do talk about it all the time. That's up to them. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for wisdom that gained through life. Um, I would say that, of course, rather than youth, youthful exuberance. But, um, yeah, anyway, our last prize, our last prize for our last question. I got given this. It's the Ian Beale 2021 <laughs> calendar. And <laughs> I've got to admit, on the fridge, this wasn't going to be cheering me up too much, <laughs> as you'll see from the cover. Um, wow. Yeah. This was when he during his down and out days, and 
my worry, I didn't open it. It doesn't look like it, but it's in a cellophane seal of some kind. And I just felt it would be all of Ian Beale in his down and out days. So I, I know he's a character from, Co no, not Connor Speak, the other one. Um, EastEnders. EastEnders. But I haven't watched that for so many years. Is that how he looks now? Is he down and out? Or is this? I don't know. I think there was a period. Or something. I don't know if anyone still watches EastEnders. I don't anymore. Um, is Lofty still in it? I'd, I'd be keen to know. He is. Um, he is, yeah. What about um, Ange? Is she in it? Definitely. Didn't Dirty Den kill her? What? Yeah, that was... That Ange was got her. killed. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert from the early 70s. <laughs> what are we like? <laughs> we haven't watched it for so many years. So many... Yeah, what about um oh I like um Arthur Fowler. He was really good. He must be oh. still going. Was oh. was he Ian Bill's dad? No, no, his name being Arthur Fowler was a clue. <laughs> uh, not in this day and age. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's got my name, not her dad's. Okay, yeah, I understand. I understand, yeah. Sorry, I got that one wrong. Um, but I still don't think they're quite connected. Lou Bill. Um Lou Bill. With Lou Bill, was that one? She was, well, was wasn't she? Didn't she, she live in it? Pauline. Pauline Fowler. Pauline She's still Fowler. in it, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. She, she must be old. well. I, I don't know. There, there was some that connection. Now. Maybe there wasn't was in, um, Are You Being Served or something. Pauline Fowler was in Are You Being Served as Pauline Fowler, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah, she was playing the role twice. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was it. Nothing, wasn't she? <laughs> That's right. Now we're Oz, going to Mrs. Slocum. Ozcab 5, Ozcab 5. <laughs> um, are you there? Hi, Irene. C Colin thought you were only 40, Jeanette. Oh. He's a smooth operator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, nice. I'll, um, I'll take that, honestly. That's my overexposure with the light. <laughs> look slightly more wrinkle-free. Well, yes, it, uh, we have Jenny Lifko, the former Queen, reinstated Queen of the Retro Raffle scene. She says, you don't look that that age either, Jeanette. Join Aww. the club. We don't care anymore. You're <laughs> um, over 57. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank oh, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt the broadcast, but I've just seen something from Brenda. She says nearly all of those uh, East Ender characters are either dead or gone off. Gone oh. off. Gone off. Gone off. Tell by date. Uh, no. uh, they've gone off like milk, and they've darling. Um, <laughs> God, I'm, I'm in shock. What lofty? What was Ian Beale there back in them days? He must have been. So he's always been there. He's so only had one he job since he left school. Still there since the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> oh. On his CV, it just says EastEnders. That's it, nothing else. No other words are needed. And you two can win this calendar if you answer this question correctly. What was the name of the father in the series Steptoe and Son? Quite an easy one, I think. A clue. <laughs> There's a clue in the in the title. <laughs> yeah, but I want their full name. Oh, all right. <laughs> what, just their surname. <laughs> just just their surname, yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, oh. Mr. Sandra says it's not on anymore, EastEnders. Oh. Who knew? I didn't know that. I thought, you know, what's Lofty up to these days? I was going to start getting into it in 2021 um, with that Emmerdale Coronation Street business as well. Mm -hmm. So let's see what people are answering. Duncan says Albert. Uh, Sandra says Ian is still there. <laughs> She's referring to previous things. Well, we've, got, we've got one right anyway. Yeah. Jenny's gone Albert. Irene's gone Alfred. Jenny's gone Albert. Albert. Um, Christine's gone Albert. I can't do the impression. Can anyone of you two do an impression of Steptoe and Son? No. Uh, hold on. Let me think. I, not the old man. No. Harold. What is it you want, Dad? Oh, not <laughs> bad. That's not bad. You dirty old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, Christine says Albert, Sandra says Albert, and um, Brenda says Albert too. And the answer was, of course, Albert. Well done. You Yay. all get that calendar. We've got a bulk lot of them. 
Cook and get rid of them. Um, you all get that all flying out to you in the near future, possibly, maybe never. Um, I'm sort of slightly confused with that photo, really, isn't it? The, the calendar with the two glasses of scotch and a cigar with an Ian Beale calendar. Yeah, well, that's like for the man who's sort of like a man of leisure who's just <laughs> who everything. Yeah, man who has everything. You know, you just you get your cigar on the go. It could be a condor. What was that? What was the one, Jeanette? Um, the cigar. Will uh, he have? Uh... I've forgotten now. Oh, you've forgotten. Hamlet. Uh, Hamlet. Hamlet. You have that's, your Hamlet. But that's a proper big cigar, isn't it? It's not like your yeah. That's a, that's a Hamlet cigar. That's a that's a Cuba, uh, Cuban Havana, isn't it? Yeah, it is. yeah. If that's the man who has everything, he sits there. He has a little sort of spirit drink of scotch or cold tea or something, and he he looks through the nice calendar of Ian Bill. That's what men, like real men, do of an evening. Mm. I, I'm the opposite of that. I've got my uh, black coffee in my little yeah. heart mug. I've got some leftover uh, roll mop salad next to me and some panettone cake. And I don't have a calendar, um, but I have got a wall planner with nothing on it yet for 2021. <laughs> and you're not a man. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so it works out that. Well, There's yeah, always yeah. that. I a woman's body. <laughs> no, this. Um, I don't know if you have, you don't have it, Jeanette. We we have a rule that, that we have a calendar on the fridge, not Ian Beale, because I didn't want to like that one. Um <laughs> And if it's on the if it's on the calendar, an event, it's happening. If it isn't, it's not happening. Oh. We have to make sure it's on the calendar so everybody knows. Those are... in pen, not pencil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. That's going to be coming to all you PP, maybe in the future, maybe never. Um, now, let's see if I can find it. We're going to have a little video. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're going to have a video. I'm going to take say goodbye to Jeanette and Tom just for a tick. See you in a tickly boo. Um, there they go, there they go. We're going to have a, a, a video from Mr. Martin Newell. Um, this is from a, a live show. We, we 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 used to do regular shows at Colchester Arts Centre. We used to do fortnightly memory afternoons too. But prior to that, we used to do uh, live public events for everyone, show everybody off, show, show people the work we've been doing and have lots of singers and dancers or, you know, we had clog dancers, we had Bollywood dancers, we had brass bands, we had male voice choirs all sorts and we also had uh great entertainers local and further afield and one of those afternoons we had martin newell singing a wonderful song an original song of his uh, all about his mum called my young mum let's put it on now So they stopped what they were doing And they danced until the dawn Peace having come My young mum So her billet was in Knightsbridge In a townhouse in the square At 18 years of age She liked her cancers and beer Used parrots for a shortcut If she was running late Whistle and run My young mum Years gone by Under a country sky Never even saw her ageing Till her time had come My young There's a picture on my wall of her when she was a girl Beryl in the high street in 1934 And an echo of my daughter who looks the spit of her When she was young, my young and their caps filled London with their laughter and they tantalised the chaps they never went away 
they're just sleeping in today. Swans having swung my young man. Thank you. Here we go, the lovely Martin Newell, um, a lovely chap, very talented young man. Sorry for the uh, the echo on that. I think I left the dub echo on. I don't know if you heard it on screen here. It sounded like there was a, a reggae echo going on, a uh, delay. Um, me. Oh, did it? Well, that's good. Maybe it was just here, and maybe I've just left my dub echo on, as I often do of a Friday afternoon. Um, Martin, hopefully, a wonderful, um, talented singer, songwriter, and big poet, um, one of the most uh, published poets uh, out there these days. Um, he, We're hoping to get him on. He's agreed to come on. And um, if we can work it out with the technical side, we'll get him on soon. But that was a song that, that I, I absolutely love. I love Martin Newell at the piano. I'm just... He did, um, I think it was uh, Janina Sh uh, Doyle shared, shared a video recently of him singing a, a Christmas song at the piano at Colchester Arts Centre, and it was just lovely. I can't remember what one it was. Have, um, you, have yourself a merry little Christmas, yeah. and he always pronounces the T in the middle, and it's lovely. I was yeah. there when that was recorded. Oh, were you there? It's just absolutely yeah. wonderful. I love him on the piano. Of course, we probably struggle to get a... a, a grand piano into the uh, proceedings but we can try um he, he doesn't mind slumming it and playing a normal piano and he has been known to just play a keyboard <laughs> that's the kind of guy i like um so hopefully we'll have martin on um we, we will be having some live artists singing um most weeks we've just got us this week uh just coming gently moving back into the new year people are quite busy um or they're trying to be busy. <laughs> um, let me see what people are saying. Great words to that song, says Brenda. Uh, I love this. Um, me too. My young mum. It reminded me um, so much of people I've known and uh, people I've loved. Uh, wow, that was such a nice song, says Marie. Lovely words and song, says Kim. Yeah, I agree. Let's get Martin on soon. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the... Uh, Actually, we don't have a jingle for memory of the week. We should probably, I should probably write a jingle. Um, maybe I'll think about that. I just think we've, we've, I've been over, over jingling it recently. So, <laughs> not <enough>. painful. <laughs> this one, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you out there. And if you can think of a memory, do write it down. And if you um, write it down, we'll share it. And I'm also going to ask Tom and Jeanette if they remember the worst item of clothing or outfit you've ever worn or owned. Is there things that you were sort of like, oh, God, why did I do that? That was a bad fashion mistake. Um, anything for you, Tom? Probably loads of things. I mean, I can't I can remember having a pair of high waisters, which now I sort of regret quite a lot, I think. <laughs> Is that like, um, you see, sometimes very old I gentlemen wait. have their trousers right up. <laughs> Simon Cowell style. <laughs> But I think they might, you know, because you used to get, they used to have like three buttons, didn't they? But yeah, and add on these, the white. I think these may have had four or Ooh. four. Oh. Did you buy them from Bacchus in town? I have no idea where they came from. I think <laughs> I my mum might have even bought them for me. Um, and they had quite straight legs, I, I, I imagine. Straight and wide, you mean? Yeah, pretty uh, wide, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure I'd wear them now. Yeah. I'd like to see that. <laughs> yeah. I know you've not got you many. You can't come round, Jeanette. I've got them on, but, you know. <laughs> With your Crocs. <laughs> how, how about you, Jeanette? Any um, fashion? Well, obviously, I was a Bay City Roller fan at the time oh. with the cotton round my trousers and uh, scarf tight to my wrist. But the thing that sticks in my mind was that my lovely sister, Lorraine, friend of the show, um, she's who's still in St. Lucia extending her holiday by week. Hi, Lorraine. All right, love. If you're going to be locked down, you might as well be in St. Lucia, not here. Okay. She, um, when we were little, 
even though we we're three years apart, my mum used to dress us in the same clothes or very similar. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't stand it. My little sister wearing kind of, you know, and, and she always looked cuter and she was really pretty and she was lovely. And, and I just looked this gangly ginger haired thing, uh, not looking, not rocking the look as well as she did. And so I couldn't stand it back then. Now she's been living with me for a couple of years and um, we're really happy to share clothes. In fact, most <laughs> we're, me, my sister and my daughter share footwear because we're all the same size. But me and Lorraine share clothes quite a lot. She's only a little bit bigger than me. So most things I can I still borrow. <laughs> nice, nice. I don't want to hear, though, about you sharing green shield stamps. As no, long as you that. That. In fact, I'm just looking. Uh, this is Neve's jumper. <laughs> that I've You're just looking to see if you've got some down there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm wearing other people's clothes today, but no stamps. <laughs> no stamps. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, that's nice. I was just thinking sort of like there are probably things um, – that I didn't like when I was younger. Uh, and my mum used to make clothes for me and my brother and dress us in a similar way. Oops, sorry, not quite so samey, but um, she did make a basic roller outfit for my brother. Nice. Jean jacket, jean sort of trousers. Oh, getting a bit loud now. Um, and um, tartan on the edges. Around mm -hmm. the bits. Um, luckily, I didn't have any of those. But I do remember... An item of clothing that I kind of like, I wish I had. It, it, it was the worst by the time it was finished. I would bought a brand new pair of white stay pressed trousers. I think I went down Carnaby Street or something like that, or uh, Bethnal Green. Probably I couldn't <laughs> go to get all the way. West. Was, Is that what yeah, Brick Lane, there was a place where you used to get boots and sort of like trousers and whatnot. And I got these white stay pressed trousers and I was so happy with them. And all the lads were on the, the street behind playing on the grass cricket. And I used to be good at cricket. I played for the school and that. So I thought, oh, I'm going to have a play of cricket. Get the bat. It comes back the ball, give, knock it for five or – no, five. That really shows you how much I know about cricket. Just knock it for four or six. <laughs> Go running um, across the grass, slip – get dog mess all the way down the side of the white stay pressed. <laughs> Never, ever wore them again. Never. Oh, I still cry over that of an evening. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Anybody else? Let's see what people are saying. Elmi says she never enjoyed wearing her mini skirts. Legs are long and too thin. Oh, I disagree Elmi. with that. I, I've got very long and very thin legs. And I love wearing mini skirts with thick tights. And it probably looks like threads hanging from the skirt, but I don't care. I feel really comfortable in short skirt and skinny legs. Yeah, I can echo that. I also have really long legs, very skinny, and I like wearing tights and mini skirts too. Oh, <laughs> don't say that out loud. No, I'm only joking. I have um, very short legs, so yeah. it doesn't do me any favours at all, the skirt. You're, you're like you Annie Wise in a skirt, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> short, um, fat, hairy legs, yeah. Oh, bless you. Um, Chris, Chrissy says leggings they cling to your legs and show all your bumps she'd rather wear trousers oh bless you um, Elmi, El, Elmi says M Mariana Mariana am I saying Mariana. Mariana. Mariana she's lovely uh, my daughter still gets laughed at by her brothers for the Robin Hood style hat with feathers she wore to my brother's wedding <laughs> 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 uh, I would like to see pictures please Elmi if you can oh. get Mariana to send them in, or if you can send them in. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, anybody else, have you got any stories of um, items, fashion items, things you wore that you sort of like think, oh, I wish I, I, I have. I have changed the Crocs, actually, lately. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, hold on. <gasps> oh, what are those? Waterproof slippers. They're boxing gloves. Are they they are. North Face. North, North Face. face. North face slippers. They're the thing to wear nowadays. Are they? they... I have a few ones for Christmas, and they're by Shoe S H U H or something. And they're very, oh, yes. very warm. Well, I've got these ones. Um, they look quite oh, good. Yeah. Amazon, Amazon, yeah. Nice one. <laughs> I have to wear really. I I'm actually wearing two pairs of thermal socks, <laughs> and, and I've got two these. pairs of those. <laughs> two pairs of those. Um, I've got terrible circulation. Apple cider vinegar is the only thing that helps me. Are yours, are yours warm, Tom? Yeah, they are. 
they're like a quilted jacket, you know, like the like a puffer jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. And Jeanette's look nice too. They're lovely. Um, very I'm not nice. Sure Jeanette's. They look <laughs> they're not the right colour for me, I think. Oh, no. they're pale grey, so they pale look like my jumper. I've, see, it's not just thrown together this outfit. No, <laughs> this, didn't you? It's it's totally cool. <laughs> or you just have grey clothes. Yeah, it doesn't show the dandruff. <laughs> well, Elmi likes them. She says they're very nice slippers. Oh, that's there we your go. Top. Any you need um... a few feathers in there? <laughs> Did you see Chrissy's um, comment about about her leggings? Hmm. <laughs> I read it out. Oh, I didn't. I didn't hear you. Sorry, I zoned out. <laughs> well, you zoned out, didn't you? I was too busy, I was busy thinking about slippers. Too busy eating your panettone. I am eating my panettone now. Salad <laughs> finished. I'm onto the cake. Well, let's go for the first time with vintage TV show of the week. Mm. Vintage TV show of the week. Vintage TV show. Of I know you love it. I know you want it. I know you need it. You're gonna vote on it. Oh yeah! <laughs> Jono, you're better and better. I love them. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, keeps me out of trouble, you know. <laughs> um, just mentioned Sandra says no. I'm I'm not a one for leggings either. Just trousers. Oh, this nice uh, connection there, Sandra. She always looks good. Well turned out, like Chrissy. Chrissy says Brian wore a hat once with a feather in when he was young. Um, and like... leggings. What's that, Tom? <laughs> and leggings. And leggings. And no. some little and some little um, <laughs> boots like yours. I think. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Brian. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we'll let him. Um, we'll let him come in if he's available on the uh, computer. Chrissy's got her own computer now. Bit, bit Errol Flynn. I imagine. Bit Errol Flynn. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah, as long as he's not a bit maxed wall. You know, it's the other side of the coin, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. I'll try um, to be polite about it. Of course you are. Of course you John are. John Cooper Clark wears trousers that are so tight they look like leggings. And he looks a bit Max Wall sometimes with his jacket and his skinny legs. Mm. Who's that? John Cooper Clark. Sorry, Dr. John Cooper Clark, now Dr. the poet. John Clark. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> PhD. Mm. Um, so the first oh my screen's gone funny. The first vintage TV show to battle it out this week is, of course, Malcolm and Wise. In all, there were 71 episodes on both BBC and ITV. They had famous guests on their show, such as Angela Rippon, Andre Previn and Glenda Jackson. Um, one of their catchphrases... Was, Andre Preview. Andre Preview, yeah. One of their catchphrases Well, what do you think of it so far? Rubbish. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Their big song at the end was Bring Me Sunshine. 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 I'm glad you're still away. You're not <laughs> in, 19... yeah. in 1977, their Christmas show scored one of the highest ever audiences in British television history with more than 20 million viewers. The cited figures vary between 21 to 28 million, depending on the source. And Ernie made the first bit of useless trivia. Ernie made the first UK mobile phone call on the 1st of January 1985. Using the Vodafone network, the call was made from St. Catherine's Docks dock to Vodafone's head office in Newbury, which at the time was over a curry house. <laughs> I like wow. that. Detail. I wonder why he got to do Ken that. Ken probably knew about that, didn't he? Ken DeLue, he knew all yeah. about that. Maybe he answered the phone. Oh, actually, I wonder if the Saunders live above the curry house. God, that'd be really handy for Ken Delu, wouldn't it? <laughs> but they've got a dumb waiter that the food can just come up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just uh, send three down, I think. Yeah. You're all quite young, you two. Do you remember Morecambe and Wise? Morecambe and Wise, as they say in America? Very much so. Yeah. My mum absolutely adored them and thought they were so funny. And that they, they used to... They always they'd go to bed at night in the same bed, and and that was just kind of okay that two grown men would go to bed and reading their books and having a chat about the day. Yeah. <laughs> so you might turn the light off. Great pajamas. Oh, uh, that was cool. <laughs> did you? Uh, you must have watched it, Tom. Yeah, I watched it. I, in fact, I, there was a program on them um, 
recently, recently, wasn't there, over Christmas, where they'd found some old um, programs that they'd lost. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I so lovely. I sort of watched, I think I watched one of those. Yeah. Yes. Oh, they were so good. Eric Morecambe was just genius. I remember when my daughter must have been about six or seven, I decided that, you know, her education for things creative and musical started. And so, you know, I got her to watch kind of good films and 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 I introduced her. I sat her on my lap and got YouTube up and I showed her uh, Morecambe and Wise doing the breakfast scene to the music of oh, you know, with the, the toast the and yeah. Thing. Yeah, and, and cutting the um catching the toaster at the toaster it was fantastic and she was there absolutely mesmerized she must have watched it about 10 times <laughs> yeah well, they were an integral part of of, of my youth uh, um, yeah. and sort of the family would sort of sit together and watch that well the whole nation really used to watch them um yeah Eric Morgan was just amazing. Um, and so many uh, comedians that come later sort of took a leaf out of his book and his style. Um, really great. So did you like the um, Morgan and Wise show? Did you used to watch it? Do you reckon that could be a winner for you? Because we're going to be asking you to vote. Jeanette's going to be looking at getting those votes together soon. I'll just read a couple of comments. Marie, remembering the um, clothing memory of the week, said she found a family photo of us the other day, a day out at Colchester Zoo. Mum and Dad were wearing matching leather jackets and all us kids had matching shell suits. <laughs> That's Probably one to take in. Yeah, uh, probably that. wouldn't wear one now. Oh, what that'd be a photo and a half to see that. What a great, great memory that is. I um, wonder if Culture Zoo would like to see that photo and, and advertise the zoo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> great day out. <laughs> Annette uh, Bowden Casson says they were great, Malcolm and Wise, a blast from my childhood. Sandra says, yes, enjoyed their shows. Kim says, Kendalu would live above a curry house if he could. <laughs> and she always watched their, they all watched their show of Malcolm mm. and Wise. So that's the first one, Malcolm and Wise. What's that going to go against? Well, it has to be another big hitter. And that big hitter is the two Ronnies. Oh, two yeah. Ronnies. There were 94 episodes on the BBC. Famous sketches included Four, four Candles. Uh, Swedish made simple, F U N E X, um, crossed lines, and of course the phantom raspberry blower of old London town. <laughs> and a bit of useless trivia the raspberries were actually done by uh, Ronnie Barker's friend David Jason, who oh. went on to open, open all hours. Yeah. yeah. He um, was genius because he did lots of other shows, not just the two Ronnies. Yeah. Um, open all hours, porridge. I yeah. mean, one of the greats of comedy in British comedy ever. Um, Corbett as well did Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah. Timothy, yeah. language Timothy. Language Timothy, yes. <laughs> yeah, he did other things. Um, and, of course, he did um, When the Day is Dawn in that video with Peter Kay where he <laughs> fell over. <laughs> that was such a funny thing. Um, the two Ronnies ended their show with a catchphrase, so it's good night from me and it's good night from... Him. 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 Um, they always got dressed up and sang a comedy song as a big ensemble piece. I remember that was probably at the end. They was always doing silly sort of dressing up with loads of a band, loads of dancers. Was that at the end of the show? Uh, don't know. But then don't more common wise would always get their guests to do to do as well. The, the, Let's the, face the music and dance. It's sort of a variety thing, isn't it? I presume so. It is. They're usually at the end, aren't they? Because they usually are. Um, yeah. In their heyday, this show attracted up to 8 million viewers. And um, we used to watch it and we showed it to our kids and um, they loved the two Ronnies. Um, we had a, I think we have a box set or something. It's just so, so good. Even now, if it's on, I can watch it. Um, no problem. Happy, happy, happy. Um, and it says, I love these two as well. I don't know how I will choose between the two Ronnies, because this is your choice, the two Ronnies or Morecambe and Wise for Vintage TV Show of the Week. Mull it over in your mind. Um, Tom, did you like the two Ronnies? Yeah, I used to watch two Ronnies. I did, I did like the Phantom 
raspberry blow of old London town. <laughs> I think that was probably my favourite. Mine, the memory, yeah. <laughs> Mine when I was young. When I got older, I, I kind of enjoyed the sketches more. You, yeah, I, I think it was just quite rude, wasn't it? Just the the blowing raspberries. Yeah, just the idea of it. I think I, I might. The... I think I might have gone round for a year, probably just blowing raspberries and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because other people were doing it yeah <laughs> on telly it was the um ronnie corbett when he'd tell his story and he'd sit in that chair and he'd start to tell a story and then he kept going off on tangents and so like, oh you know and come back and and it would just take it was a story as a joke but it, it used to drag it out and drag it out and go off and i found that really irritating <laughs> back then because i just wanted to hear the punchline the joke would go <laughs> off, just go off and yeah what about everything nowadays yeah. i can't see the humor in that but back then i i couldn't at all it wasn't my favorite sketch i must admit um i did like when they um the four candles obviously is, is a massive one and um the one where they stayed the cross lines when one's starting to talk and the other one on the phone at the station and the other one's sort of says something on a different call and it all links up very clever very clever writing um so let's see. Sandra says the two Ronnies. Christine says the two Ronnies. Elmi says the two Ronnies. Tony, hi Tony. He says loved both, but Malcolm and Wise for me is a favourite. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope everyone's keeping safe. Thank you, Tony. Um, Keith says the two Ronnies. Hi Keith. Hi Bri oh Brian, the innocent one. He's here. Um, he <laughs> says the two Ronnies. Brenda, the two Ronnies. Hard choices. Malcolm and Wise was good too. Loved four candles sketch. Two runnies for Kim. Oh, this is going, and I was quite surprised. Um, Keith says shaggy dog stories are too funny. I could think of shaggy dog story. That's that's what Ronnie Corbett used to do. Thank you, thank you, Keith. So, are you going to go with those gentlemen on the screen, the two runnies, or if I can find the other gentleman to put on the screen, Malcolm and Wise? Who will you go for? Hmm, hmm. Have a think about it for a minute, and while you're having a think about it, we'll play you a little video. So we see Jeanette and Tom in a minute. Jeanette can go off and count. Tom can go <laughs> off and, you know, just ponder. Get more. Yes. <laughs> there he goes. Um, we're going to have a video now, if I can find it. This is a video um, made by Tim Brunsden a few years ago for where I'd go out and interview some of our participants. And they these interviews were called the Warm and Toaster Club interviews. And this one is the Warm and Toasty Club interviews Doris. So maybe we start off at the very beginning. Mm. So very good place to start. It's a very good, good place, place to start. start. <laughs> Julian Bruce. <laughs> Was that from the sound of music? <laughs> what was my earliest memory of going up? Oh, I used to sit on my grandmother's knee. She used to give me ride a cock horse um, to Banbury Cross. Yes, I can remember that. How did that one go, Doris? Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a white lady on a white horse. Rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. She shall have music wherever she goes. <laughs> I think my mum did that with me, actually. <laughs> so that was your earliest memory? Being oh, gone. I can remember my grandmother used to do that and, and do that with me. I can remember that. Actually, when I'm telling you, I can actually see her face because she had her hair like they used to all sort of piled up, you know, like that. Mm. That must have been so that... If, is it OK to say how old you are? Yes, I was born 1920. 1920, so you're 95. Coming on, 96. 96 mm. this year. You are, mm. I remember, you're a Scorpio because you're. That's right. Stage. Yeah, that's right. 29th of October. But you've had <laughs> you've had this thing in the towel removed, haven't you? Well, I don't know about that. I don't know what other people say. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, now I'm very quiet, really. Mm. <laughs> I can't see. Oh, that's, that's me there a long while ago. That's Susan. That's my grandchildren all around me. Yeah. There's nothing like having family around. <laughs> oh, <you>. no. <laughs> we had a lovely time as children. Yeah. 
I was climbing a tree. I don't know what I was climbing the tree for, and I, I fell down the tree. I went to come off and f fell down, and a twig, well, it was quite sharp, the inside of my leg, I, it's only been a few years since it actually disappeared. I had a scar, I ripped my leg up right up there, because I caught it on a... And the woman come along, and she said, oh, my goodness, what have you done? I said, I caught it. Oh, she said, mum, come here, I've got a nappy in here, I'll put it round you. So what did she do? She spat all on it and stuck it on my leg, and she said, that'll keep it clean. <laughs> At the time, I thought, oh, gee. Anyway, she turned this nappy, she spat all in it. She said, that'll, co that'll keep it clean. I mean, it wasn't, you know, I thought at the time, oh, gee. I went home and told my mum, she said, she did what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me in my garden again. <laughs> You've always been a bit glamorous then. Oh, oh well, <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. <laughs> She's not denying it. <laughs> yeah, not denying it, Doris. <laughs> And you spoke of um, when you went up to the city before and you um, dressed up and wore the jockey hat. When, when was that? What that was uh, when I first went up there. <laughs> so could you retell that story just so we capture yeah, it? Yeah, well, well, I was only 14 and I went, it was green. I had a green coat, which was long, but I had a jockey. You know, the, that's what the jo jockeys wear. Well, I had one of them with a beak. And when I got up to London, everybody was looking and laughing at me. <laughs> and I didn't know what they were laughing at. At first I thought they were smiling at me. But then after a while I thought, well, I'm not turn me and they're all having a good laugh. And I thought, what are they laughing at? I never realised for a long while that they were laughing at me with my jockey cap on. <laughs> Green. Green is the same as the coat. <laughs> yeah. Well, it still is my favourite colour. Green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I bet you felt like a million dollars, didn't you? Well, oh, did. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, dear. Ah, oh, there's me and my pussy cat. He used to lay like that with me. Look at him, he's lovely. That is the biggest cat I've ever seen, Doris. <laughs> he was gorgeous. And you've spoken before a lot of different stories about things that happened on um, Canby Island. I wonder if you could retell the story about when the German pilot crash landed on Canby Island. Oh, yeah, I remember that poor devil. His plane was making an awful noise. And um, I thought, well, he's cut obviously it had been hit and it was coming down. And um, I thought, oh, my goodness, oh, dear, who's in there? Pilot didn't get out, by the way. He, he was, I, I don't know what happened at the time, but if the plane got hit, and uh, I, I, I suppose he was caught in, the, in, in his seat in the front. But the other chap jumped out, as I say, and he come down in the field by us. And the people that were gonna go and kill him, and oh gee, it was awful. I went over there, I was getting annoyed too. I did a bit of shouting told them to leave him alone. As I said to them, he's some mother's son or brother. I said, how would you like it? I was shouting, if your husband was up there and come down over there, somebody would go, how would you like it? He could talk quite a bit of English and he said, thank you very much for helping me. I said, my pleasure. I said, would you like to come in for a cup of tea? <laughs> Yeah, he said, so we went and we had a cup of tea. He played with my little daughter and he showed me pictures of his children. It was lovely. And I had him there till the men come for him. And I looked at me, you know. And I just said, well, <laughs> I went, they could have bought me one. I said, he's a very nice man. Don't you dare touch him, don't you hurt him. Because I should come over there and I should come and check out, make sure he's all right. Because that is not going to be me. <laughs> but I mean, he was a nice man. Yeah, and there's Peter again. Uh, he used to go to um, drawing and painting lessons. Um, he had a breakdown, 
And I said, you must do something. You can't sit around all day. So I said, "There's a the school does evening classes up there. We'll go and see if there's something you could do. And when we got up there, he liked drawing with a pencil, you know, to draw for the children. And I said, there you are, look, drawing and painting, you can go in there. So he did. And he, he that's his paintings, there's one. He spent his life in the offices in, on the railway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had a good job. Eventually he went up the ladder and did very well. Mm. <laughs> A lovely video thanks very much to tim's tim brunston who made that one of the nicest uh, people i've ever met doris was um real pleasure to see her on the screen again um just lovely just find it really endearing just hearing people's tales of of uh, their past and their life an amazing story there and she also mentioned sort of like a a little uh, fashion story with a uh, green beret um which was quite nice can i ask you did you get an echo going uh, on that recording on the sound? No? Good. Because I got an echo here, and I think it's only here, and I was troubled by it somewhat when somebody's talking. Great, great, great. Um, I heard somebody munching on some panettone. But I think... <laughs> I'll put it away now. It'll be the lady in grey. <laughs> the lady in grey <laughs> is munching <laughs> panettone. I can't hear me. Not unless I'm on the screen, surely. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's got um, everywhere. Oh, you do tease um, me. He's a teaser, isn't he? Um, Brenda's got to go. We'll see you, Brenda. Um, the votes were still coming in. Uh, Annie says about the video, a lovely interview of a lovely lady. I remember watching this before. The nappy story is so funny. We used to show our videos at the pre premiere them at our shows, um, which was nice. So some of you may have seen that. Chrissy's seen it before. She says she loves it. Very nice interview, Elmi. Kim says, lovely interview. They always have great stories to tell. Marie says, that was really interesting. I'd love to hear more of these. Oh, bless you, Marie. Um, and no echo, 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 Annie. No echo. I'm happy. Um, that was so, a lovely story, and I do remember seeing it at the art centre. I don't remember seeing it on here before. No, but I don't have a brilliant memory. But at the art centre, oh, on the big screen, the stories because there were several people you interviewed, and I, I just think how lovely that that their stories are archived like that. You know, and yeah. you know, I don't know if Doris is still around. I, oh, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Um, not sure. Um, but loved hearing from her again. It's um, lovely listening to those stories. Reminds me of, of stories that my grandparents used to tell and that um, my surrogate mum, Valda Hamblian, she's so lovely, and she has lovely memories of um, living in Roe Hedge during wartime and uh, that they were prisoners of war or there were children, that was it, um, refugee children kind of sent out to, to be in the countryside and not in yeah. town and cities and it's lovely yeah. hearing those old stories just reminds me of that it's great yeah um we may have some more we have got some more but we'll see how we can fit them in when we've got live guests to show these going on a bit so we might be finished a little bit earlier but what do you think ladies and gentlemen you've got your votes in um let's see what Jeanette is telling us about um the vintage tv show of the week our first one ever more more common wise versus the two ronnies how did we get on I well, think I know. A very clear winner. We have the, the two, two Ronnies. Ronnies. The two Ronnies. Did you like doing vintage TV of the show of the week? Would you like to hear more? Yeah. Um, oh, there's so many TV shows that are brilliant. Um, I think there's there's plenty to get into, and I'm sure you'll know them. That was our first vintage TV show of the week. Vintage TV show of the week. Vintage TV. Show of the week. I know you love it. I know you want it. I know you need it. You're gonna vote on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did, and you voted on it. And the two Ronnies is our first winner. Well done, and thanks to Jeanette for counting the votes. Wonderful. Um, 
You can tell she's an accountant, can't you? <laughs> level Sorted two. that out. Level Sorted two that. qualified, that's all. <laughs> Sorted that out pretty quickly. I did, yeah. yeah. I we don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let me find it here. Um, first time ever, we actually have Jeanette's going to do her poem of the week, and she's done a jingle, everyone. <laughs> she has done a jingle. I'll play it. We'll stay on the screen. You listen. This is Jeanette's poem of the week jingle, the long version to start with. <laughs> the warm and toasty club present a feature poem of the week chosen and read by Jeanette Vines. Blimey, she's got some cheek. It's poem of the week. It's sometimes short and sweet. It's poem of the week. And it's always man in feet. <laughs> there we go. That's the next poem of the oh. week. Jingle. Oh. I've never heard a jingle before, and I played guitar and I sang it and everything. I didn't put any harmonies on. I thought that'd be a bit overkill. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, that was very nice. Did you like it, people? I bet you did. Jeanette's first jingle in the world ever. <laughs> very well done. Very well done, Jeanette. You're very uh, multi-talented. Uh, we should get me and Tom off the screen. As much as we like uh, living off your glow of um, <laughs> brilliance, we'll get off and you can actually do the jingle. Uh, not the jingle. <laughs> jingle of the week. Of the week. <laughs> Let's get out of your way. You do it. This is Jeanette's poem of the week. Well, um, it's, it's not the uh, most fun of poems. Um, I, I've been thinking about how the weather's turned so cold and it's frosty and there's snow in places. And I'm thinking about it's lockdown and the homeless people and things that are troubling me, as I'm sure they are lots of people. And um, in my search for poems to read to you, I've been lent a book by Graham Andrew, and it's uh, Selected Poems, 1967 to 1987, by Roger McGough. Apparently, he's a, a Liverpudlian, but I'm not going to read his poem in that accent. I will just read it um, in a quite a serious voice, because it's a serious poem. Snow crackles underfoot like powdered bones. Trees have dandruff in their hair, and the wind moans, the wind moans. Ponds are wearing glasses with lenses three feet deep. Birds are silent in the air as stones and the wind can't sleep. The wind can't sleep. I found an old man by the road who had not long been dead. I had not heard his lonely groans nor seen him weep. Only birds heard the, heard the last words he said before the wind pulled a sheet over his head. The wind pulled a sheet over his head. Thank you. That was Snow Scene by Roger McGough. Well, that's cheered me right up, that is. Wow. It's poignant, you know. We can't have, we've got to have different sides. Of light, light and shade, light and shade. Yeah. Um, I'm in the dark here now. I turned the light. <laughs> yeah. I can't reach it from here. That was lovely. It was uh, very poignant, actually. Very yeah. nice. I just um, think we have so much fun on here. I, I don't always want to forget the seriousness of what you know other people are going through. And no matter how bad sometimes we think our times are, there's always people a lot worse. And, and it's nice to always. get them support. Yeah. And we um, we send our love out to everybody in these difficult times, um, knowing in our hearts there's hope and there's optimism for future um, vaccines and future events from us and from lots of other people and normal things that you'll be able to do in due course just got to get around with the little needle and get it sorted to everybody and we'll be back as always um, thank you for a lovely um, poem of the week oh let's, let's, uh, let's see the uh, short version have, have I got it here it's poem of the week it's sometimes short and sweet. It's poem of the week. And it's always man in feet. <laughs> yes, Jeanette, you get two royalties today. Two royalties. <laughs> I tried to play it on the piano and I didn't realise how bad my piano playing is, so I just stuck to guitar. <laughs> we could have done it. Wonky jingles. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll record it on piano if you want. Uh, no, 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 thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't sell it the first time, Jeanette. No. 
I won't write any more. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, um, we've been doing poem of the week since March. So, you know, you've got away with it for 10 months. Exactly. I've, I've, yeah, I've had a syndicate going. Um, people's <laughs> comments. Annie says, loved vintage shows, would love to see it back. That's what we want to hear. That's nice. Elmi's got to have a go. Have a lovely afternoon. She's not got to have a go. She's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to have a go at you. Um, um, yay, Jeanette. Well done, says Annette. Great jingle, Jeanette, says Kim. Oh, no, this is not good for me. That was really good, Jeanette, says Kim. <laughs> oh, nobody's going to like to listen to my jingles anymore. Um, lovely, says Christine of the poem, as does Kim. And Christine says, love listening to your poems, Jeanette. Oh, bless you all. Bless you all. Thanks for being with us. We've missed being with you. We can't be with you in person yet, but we will be with you, hopefully, through 2021. Um, we're going to be coming back with lots of live guests soon we've got to change things up a little bit because we can't really do backing tracks so we're going to speak to the artists and see what we can do without backing tracks to bring you live music we're working on it um but we will be running all the way through to easter and beyond maybe we're off good friday because we land on a friday this year so maybe we're off then but we're up, we're certainly all the way through to the end of may um with our afternoon shows um and if we come back in between that in a physical sense so be it we can still run the shows too um we have our newsletters which will remain continuing every month or so and there's a phone line on the newsletter you, the number's been given out lots if you need to call in the week for a chat to keep up just if you're feeling a little bit low or you need a bit of somebody to chat to we're still going to be there um we are the warm and toasty club i'd like to thank tom and jeanette and also the National Lottery Community Fund for funding our work. And most of all, as well as the lottery players, thank you. Thanks all you guys for being with us and sticking with us. Um, we will be back next week, next Friday. I'm just going to get the credits. We'll say goodbye, goodbye. See you next Bye, Friday. Have a good week. Bye. Have a great week and we'll see you next week, one o'clock. We've all got a tale to tell Times were not always so But putting it all aside We made it through by and by It's warm and toasty in here Share our laughter, sometimes tears You'll be welcome with a cup of tea And a biscuit, maybe two or three Wrapped in a little white cloth Cooking for hours in the old iron pot There's a jam roly-poly for tea Enough for you and dad and grandma and me What did we like the most? Fish paste sandwich or peas on toast Nothing could come 